The buzz around cryptocurrencies has captivated mainstream conversation. At one point in 2021, the total market cap of cryptocurrencies pushed past 2 trillion US dollars for the first time. Let's look at what this means for Bitcoin, the first ever cryptocurrency created. Soon after Bitcoin launched in 2009, it was trading at 8 US cents a coin. Fast forward to April 2021, the price of one Bitcoin nearly reached 65,000 US dollars. So if you had invested $100 worth of Bitcoin back in 2009, in April 2021, that would have been approximately $52 million. On our first episode of Morning Studio Decrypts, we start from the beginning. If you are on the periphery of this conversation or looking to understand the fundamentals, my next conversation is for you. We've invited Toya Zhang from the crypto exchange AAX to break it down for us. Let's decrypt. Toya Zhang, welcome to Morning Studio Decrypts. Hello, thanks for having me here. So today we're going to distill for our readers the important things to know about the cryptocurrency landscape. So let's get to it. Toya, tell me, how has technology like cryptography and blockchain revolutionized the uh, digital asset landscape? Prior to the blockchain-powered cryptocurrency, or prior to the popularity of Bitcoin, the digital currency can be widely referred to anything that is digital format that has a value. So it can be digital bonds, digital debt, or it can be the digital token issued by the internet company. So the blockchain technology or the in introduction of Bitcoin actually gave um, a concept which is authenticated ownership. What does it mean? It means like uh, the ownership of a digital currency is widely recognized by, by everybody. So this is the first thing. Secondly, with the blockchain technology, people can digitalize uh, with anything basically in the physical world. Uh, it can be property, it can be uh, luxuries, uh, it can be the uh, securities, bonds, all these financial instruments, and it can be something that we, uh, we have never imagined before. For example, the bandwidth, people's attention, personal data. These are all the things that can be digitalized and fractionalized to allow trading. And for many of those who are still learning about uh, cryptocurrencies, the first thing that they get into is Bitcoin. Can you tell me uh, a little bit more about uh, what is Bitcoin specifically and uh, why is this important and, and special? So this uh, was designed as Bitcoin. Um, to be a peer-to-peer -peer currency. But nowadays, no one is uh, using Bitcoin as a currency because the volatility of its price is just not suitable here. But some people are still holding a uh, Bitcoin or holding the other kind of cryptocurrency because they believe somehow this can against inflation or it can against any kind of turmoil in the society against the, 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 the government uh, cracking down. So this is kind of the cryptocurrency Bitcoin as itself having the value here. So you mentioned that there are other cryptocurrencies I believe they're called alt altcoins. Uh, can you tell us what some of the altcoins are? I think uh, Ethereum is in particular one of the ones that uh, people often talk about. Uh, what is it? Uh, Bitcoin is just a cur uh, currency that is not supporting programs or applications built on top of it. But Ethereum creatively supports um, programs or applications on top of it. It's the enabler of the current, uh, currently very popular DeFi, decentralized finance, the NFT, non-fungible tokens. It actually supports the whole new uh, financial ecosystem. Ethereum also has a lot of competitors, namely the uh, EOS, Cardano, uh, Solana, Tron. So these are all public chains that are striving to be faster than Ethereum or having mu much more cap capabilities. These kind of technology innovation competitions is always um, healthy and um, welcome in the whole society, from my opinion. Okay, so what do you think the challenges and kind of uh, hurdles are for this space uh, you know, to, for, for adoption of cr cryptocurrencies? The biggest challenge is actually the speculative trading activity. So this is um, also a signal of how much we need regulation and guidance in this space. It's very hard because 
uh, for example, decentralized exchange. People can get in, uh, put money in, without any um, framework or regimes of, of regulation. So first, the people need to be properly educated in terms of investment, financial management, risk management, and get rid of those chasing hype activities. Then um, it will be much healthier for a long term. I mean, clearly, this is a rapidly evolving space. But let, let's look down the road maybe three years from now. How do you think this cryptocurrency landscape will evolve? So first, the thing what I saw is there is already coming called a protocol war. That means a lot of public chains are combating with each other which, uh, with which protocol is better. The uh, Ethereum, or Cardano, EOS, even Binance Smart Chain, they're competing with each other, which one has the better capa capacity, which one has faster transactions per second to support the applications built on top. The second is there are approximately 3,000 applications at this moment recorded by, by CoinMarketCap. So we don't need that many because by essence, we can see a lot of applications are doing similar things. The third thing that will happen is absolutely the market cap. The market cap will grow significantly because we have already seen that institutions have been recognizing cryptocurrency as a investable asset. Let's, let's put it in this way. They are putting uh, cryptocurrencies, different type of them uh, into their portfolio. So we can already expect the whole market cap of the cryptocurrency is go going to grow bigger. So that's uh, around three years what we can see. Yep. Toya, that was really enlightening. You've given us a lot to think about. Uh, thank you for joining us on Morning Studio Decrypts. Thank you.